Welcome to the Less Stressed Life podcast. This is your host, Krista Bigler, private practice integrative nutritionist, helping people across the U.S. reverse digestive issues, eczema, and autoimmunity via phone and video consult. To learn more, visit lessstressednutrition.com. Now, on to the show. All right, today on The Less Stressed Life, we're covering an important topic because you've no doubt heard or used or know about essential oils. I mean, they've become very popular in the last several years, kind of mainstream, but they have a little bit of a learning curve. And so today I brought on an expert and I've been looking for a non-biased passionate essential oil expert to bring on. And so we have Samantha Lee Wright, who's the host of the world's number one essential oil podcast, The Essential Oil Revolution. With over 2 million downloads to date, she's helped people from all over the world learn about the amazing power of essential oils and how to take control of their health. She's a sought after leader in the in the essential oil community, and she loves sharing her passion for health and wellness with others. She lives with uh, her children and husband in Boone, North Carolina. So welcome, Samantha. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So Sam and I got to talk. I was on her, her podcast last week and we talked some different stress things. And today we're going to talk about stress, but also about how essential oils can foster change. And we can just start on the back because I know um, I think about essential oils as like a crazy strong herb sort of. It helps my, me wrap my brain about around it. But why don't you just open by by describing essential oils and how they're different from dried herbs and tinctures and those types of things. Tell us a little, just give us the backgrounder. Yeah, sure. Well, I like what you say about essential oils just being really strong herbs because that's essentially what they are. They, I kind of like to call them like herbs on steroids <laughs> because they're just super, super concentrated. Like for example, we say one drop of peppermint essential oil is equivalent to about 26 cups of peppermint tea. So that's sort of the difference between like the dried herb. When you actually dry a plant, let's take peppermint, for example, if you dry peppermint to turn it into a tea or dry it out to then turn it into a tincture, when you dry it out, you lose about 96% of the essential oil that's actually in that plant. And that essential, the essential oil in the plant is really where so much of the magic lies. That's why I know it's not a very scientific way to put it, but really that's the best way I can describe what essential oils can do, not only for that plant, but for us humans, when we, you know, put that oil onto our skin or into our body is we're really taking all of that magic and all of those different chemical components since we're not drying them out. And if they're properly distilled at, at a low temperature, you're really preserving a lot of those molecules and compounds that we're only just beginning to scratch the surface on understanding what they can do for us. Yeah. You know, I, that makes me think, I think my brain wants to know how things work. Do you know much about the extraction process or is it too much? Um, like basically well, how do you get essential oils? Yeah. Do you so milk will, the plant? Yeah, basically <laughs> you milk the plant. It's going to differ depending on the plant. So, you know, I tell people there's as many essential oils on this planet as there are plants on this planet. So every plant is going to have an essential oil and each plant is going to have its own sort of, you know, method or tactic to extract that. So uh, citrus plants, for example, we all love our citrus oils, orange oil, lemon oil, grapefruit oil. Like those are some of my favorites. That essential oil actually comes from the rind of the plant, not the like pulpy part in the inside. And that essential oil gets extracted by like cold pressing it essentially. So, and then compare that to, let's say something like frankincense essential oil. Frankincense essential oil is, um, much more complicated. You have to, uh, essentially scratch the surface of the tree and then collect the sap. Um, actually what, um, the good companies do, they'll take the first sap out and then they'll collect the second sap cause it's got more potency. You dry that sap in a cave for like a year, then you steam, uh, distill that resin. So, and then something a little more simpler and straightforward is, um, let's say peppermint. Again, you essentially take a bunch of peppermint plant, throw it in a double boiler at a really low temperature, collect that steam from the top and then separate the steam from the oil. And that's where you'll get sort of a more basic essential oil. 
Cool. Well, that explains the cost of frankincense for sure, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or like rose oil, for example, it takes uh, 250 pounds of rose petals to create about five milliliters of rose essential oil. So that's why a lot of companies will dilute that down and kind of mix it with some um, either synthetic or maybe jasmine like can kind of get interchanged with rose sometimes. So yeah, it's a whole world, Christina. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a whole world. So let's talk about um, some of the safety things or beginner stuff because out of the box, essential oils aren't necessarily intuitive. You just can't throw them on or just start using them. You kind of, but you can go ahead and burn yourself if you are using the wrong thing. So some, I know some things you can put on without a carrier. So let's just go over some of those like basic things that are important real quick before we get into a deep dive. Sure. Absolutely. So for beginners, I always say start very slow. One drop is all you need for an essential oil. If you're brand new, you definitely want to limit yourself to one or two drops of an oil as your body starts to get sort of acclimated to doing more. Essential oils can kind of have this very uh, detoxing effect to the body. And so if you do too much too fast, it's just uncomfortable. Then there's the um, potency factor. Essential oils are very concentrated. And so if you are a sensitive skin type, you don't want to put that essential oil straight on your skin. It, you know, you can have a reaction there. If you've got a little bit of a tougher skin, you could probably handle it. And, you know, it's your body. You experiment all you want. But generally speaking, I do recommend that when you use an essential oil, just go ahead and dilute it. If you want to experiment with using it, what we call neat or undiluted, go for it. But simply mixing, let's say, one or two drops of lavender oil with a coconut oil or olive oil or jojoba, any fatty-based oil is what we call a carrier oil. Mix those two together. Then you can put it on your skin and have a little bit of a, a safer um, experience. And also, you just it makes your oils last longer, too. Um, that being said, some oils are a little bit. Uh, less potent or less uh, strong, I'd say, on the skin. Things like lavender or frankincense or tea tree, most people can handle those neat. But if you have a sensitive skin type, then yeah, don't even risk it. Um, and then some other important safety things to be aware of for citrus oils, um, lemon, orange, tangerine, um, uh, I'm trying to think of, oh, bergamot is a, a citrus oil. A lot of people don't know that that's a citrus. Those are going to have photosynthetic properties. So you would not want to put, let's say, orange oil on your face and then go out in the sun. You will have a very, very deep burn if you do that. Sort of like, have you ever heard of a margarita burn, Krista? No, please enlighten me. Um, a margarita burn is apparently that's maybe just in the south here where we like to go out on our pontoon boats and make margaritas. But if you are, you know, um, juicing a lot of limes, again, the essential oil comes from the rind of the plant. So if you juice a lot of limes and you get that lime oil all over your hands, you, people do get burns on their hands. They call them margarita burns. <laughs> mm, nice. Well, it's a good, easy thing to help you remember that. By. Exactly. I like it. Perfect. Yeah. So Real quick, if someone is new to essential oils and they wanted to understand kind of which ones are more potent, don't put those on neat or undiluted, you know, is there like a quick resource you generally recommend um, people go look at to find that information quickly? Hmm. I think that's going to depend on if you have like a certain brand of oil that you use, most of those come with like a, a reference guide specific to those oils and blends. I'm not sure if I know of a good resource off the top of my head just for like a generic don't use this oil neat. But that's why I always say the rule of thumb is just to dilute everything. Um, and then if you're willing to experiment from there, like you're not really going to hurt yourself so much. If you put it, let's say you put peppermint on your skin, that's a hot oil. I learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my husband did too. And I put a bunch of peppermint on his belly undiluted. And he goes, is it supposed to burn like this? And I'm mm -hmm. like, um, I don't think so. So if you are in that situation, just simply get some sort of carrier oil, like coconut oil and rub it on top of that spot. And it should really cut that burn down. Well, that's, um, a, that's a good point point though if yeah. your if your kid says i have a tummy ache and you hear peppermint oil is good for that and you try something like that and they start screaming <laughs> maybe try things on yourself before you try them on your kids is always kind of a good idea as well um right yeah and, exactly 
And yeah. don't get essential oils into your eyes. That's definitely a, a no-no and it will burn It will burn your eye. It's not going to damage your eye, but it's just going to hurt for a while. And so if you do accidentally get some oil in your eye, same advice, take a glob of coconut oil and rub it in your eyes and it'll, it'll get that out. Don't drive it in further with water. Right. Yeah. You mentioned that oils can help with detoxification. So when I talk about detoxification, I actually like love talking about detoxification from a physiological process and how we detox through our liver and skin, kidneys and um, lymph system. Can you talk through what you mean by that and the physiology of, of, can you just talk us through what you mean? Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk through to the best of my ability. <laughs> I don't have a science background like you, but uh, the oil that comes to mind when I think about really those detoxing oils are again, the citrus oils. Um, lemon, for example, is extremely high in concentration in a component called D-limonene. And that component or that, that constituent um, has a very detoxing effect on like the liver, for example. Or um, I love to do this visual aid for people is take a drop of lemon oil to the bottom of a styrofoam cup and watch it dissolve that styrofoam away. And then do the same thing, put a drop of lemon on like a really thin sheet of tissue paper or something made out of a natural material and it, and it won't, you know, it won't do anything to that because that D-limonene constituent and that lemon oil is really good at dissolving, like literally dissolving petrochemicals. And so if you, you know, are drinking lemon oil, for example, if it's going to go in and it's going to find those petrochemicals that we all have been storing up in our bodies every time we, you know, pump our gas, we're breathing in, you know, petrochemicals or the plastics around us or the pesticides that might be on our fruits or veggies. Um, lemon oil, for example, is really good at going in and sort of uh, dissolving that in a really gentle, very intelligent way. Like it's not going to do any damage to the natural parts of your body. It's just going to go after those things that really shouldn't be there. Uh, I have some things to add to that. So what, the way I think about this, again, is with herbs. And so without getting too deep, there's bare nutrients, like real nutrients, B vitamins and other things that help your liver, for example, do different phases of detoxification. But something like with this lemon oil, there's this citrus oil, much like strong herbs, herbs help the body do things on their own. So it kind of just helps the body move things along is what you're saying, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Kind of kind of helping the body do things like it's supposed to do. Another thing I think about, you know, not from an interior perspective, but I think that I definitely use essential oils for a lot. And so it's kind of complementary to the whole detoxification thought and process is just how we use these in cleaning, right? And so as you were talking about um, the actions of lemon oil fighting things, it brought me back to judging the science fair last year where a girl did, and I thought this was just a lovely middle school science project where they took lemon oil and compared it to um, Clorox or whatever um, cleaner and found it was just as effective, if not more effective. Of course, you know that, but it's kind of fun to think you know, in two ways, right? Because cleaning products we know are, I just read an art, like a new study came out, I think in Norway, I don't know if you saw this, where it was basically, and I didn't um, really scrutinize the original research. I just was really attracted to the headline about cleaning kills you. Um, and so, <laughs> that is so, a good headline. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, essentially, they did some pretty decent surveying about when people cleaned and they measured lung capacity some way. And so basically, they found out that by utilizing cleaning products frequently, it was the equivalent of smoking several cigarettes, which isn't a surprise for those of us that are a little bit chemical sensitive to those things. But kind of all along the same line of detoxification, I think about citrus oils so much in cleaning and you're talking about them interior cleaning as well. So just kind of a right. nice marriage. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I can't say I completely understand the science behind exactly what essential oils can do in the body because it's so multi-layered. Like there's just so many things going on, but there are, you know, oils that are kind of known more for helping with detoxing, like peppermint, for example, it supports the gallbladder. It decreases inflammation. Uh, we already talked about lemon, but again, it's just one of my absolute favorites and lemon actually increases or, or it, uh, it boosts uh, white blood cell creation or it stimulates white blood cell creation. So that's, 
that's always really good when you're detoxing and like lemongrass, one of my favorite oils to cook with. I love to add it to soups and rice. And then it's also really good for um, like drainage within the body. So like some of the therapeutic properties of lemongrass um, really are used for like astringents and sedatives and uh, that whole detoxification process. So you know, the list goes on. Yeah, I have lemongrass in I have a like a nail polish holder in my closet that's got my essential oils, right? Like all these little little things. Um, but I do have a tiny basket in my spice cupboard. And so I it makes me use oils and cooking more frequently. I frequently use something I frequently use orange and rice or orange oil to wash uh, grapes. It's that's like mm-hmm. one of the best things possible. Um, but I never thought about lemongrass. So that's a really, really good one. I've um, never thought about orange for rice. That sounds really great. Oh, well, it's, it's funny, great. you said lemongrass, and then you said your your nail polish cabinet lemongrass can be used as a nail polish remover did you know that i had no idea that's really fun very (laughs) interesting i feel like i feel like there's so many different uses it's kind of fun to sit down and and work through them and this explains so from you know my favorite herbs are um my, my favorite cooking herbs are they're they're very weak of heart, right? Cilantro and basil, they're they're very finicky, right? They they die right away in the fridge. And right. where I live, I don't even have cilantro. I can't even buy cilantro locally. And so I will sometimes use cilantro oil if I'm making like cranberry salsa. But like you said, if you accidentally get one extra drop in there, I mean your eyes are just going to like burn <laughs> when you're trying yeah, to eat your it, salsa. It's very strong. But I love cook- like my my oil, my spice rack is starting to get overpowered with oils versus dried herbs <laughs> because you know they just, it's so concentrated and they're so fun to cook with, but you do have to be careful like oregano oil to cook with it. I always recommend just take a toothpick, stick the toothpick in the the bottle of oregano oil and then swish that toothpick around like your sauce or whatever you're using because even just one drop of oregano sometimes is enough to just overpower a that's whole dish. A, that's a really good point. I mean, as you start talking about essential oils, there's so many directions or fun directions you can go. Um, so we could do a whole topic about cooking with sen- essential oils. But because uh, so for Thanksgiving, just the other day, I was Googling essential oil turkey, and there wasn't as many resources out there as I thought there should be. But I just went ahead and rubbed orange all over my turkey, which made my house smell fantastic. It was really great, but I it would have been better as you know probably an injection. Everyone said it was really great, great, but um, yeah. So I I think that sounds great. Yeah, I mean, I you can maybe hear I'm a little bit partial to orange. It sounds like throughout this conversation, it's a phenomenal oil, and it's also I mean not to play the price point card here, but orange is relatively much less expensive than a lot of other oil. Like your citrus oils are going to be on the cheaper side than your, you know, frankincense and rose and sandalwood and all those like really hard to get oils, but like that doesn't make them any less awesome and Mm -hmm. powerful. (laughs) Yeah. I never really consider myself an essential oil aficionado, but I did go through a solid 18 months of really trial and error working with them, et cetera, because I feel like there is a lot to learn. Um, It's kind of like with herbs, you've never really done learning about that. And so um, I think there's, there's definitely a place where here's like your basic oils. And I love that we've been talking about a lot of basics of peppermint, lemon, orange, just some simple ones, right? Um, Easy to obtain ones as well. Whereas some of, as you know, some of the oils, they have a higher price point. So when you're just getting started, it's nice to understand the basics with some, some simpler or cheaper ones to begin. Yeah, absolutely. And just be willing to experiment. I mean, once you know those kind of basic safety points and you use common sense, like don't drink a whole bottle of essential oil and you won't die. And uh, once you get those sort of basic safety points uh, kind of instilled in you, then you can have so much fun just experimenting. Like there's really not many ways you could go too wrong, just putting some oils and throwing some in a diffuser or experimenting with cooking or putting some oils into a massage blend. Like there's just so many things you can do. And I always encourage people to have fun with it and experiment because it's all, it can be so intuitive. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. So we talked about some detox things. I know that you brought along, you, you had some science you wanted to share with us about triggers for memories and things like that. I'm going to let you take the floor on that, what you wanted to share. Sure. Yeah. So one of my favorite things about essential oil is their really unique ability to connect with our limbic system. So like unlike our sense of sight or our sense of hearing, um, smells 
our process first through the olfactory bulb. And the olfactory bulb has this direct connection to two areas of the brain that are directly linked with emotion and memory. It's the amygdala and the hippocampus. So um, yeah, every all, like visual, auditorial, tactile, all of that information does not pass through those specific areas of the brain. And so this is why all all fac all faction, like the this uh, act of smelling more than any other sense is so successful at triggering emotions and memories. And so that's why if you, you know, smell in, you know, your grandma's old shirt, it just brings you back to those memories so quickly. And knowing that you can really play around with essential oils to really tap into that area of your brain to your advantage. You can purposely use an essential oil like lavender or orange or like my go-to is um, elangulang and frankincense together just brings me to this really, really happy place because there's something about those smells when they interact with that emotional part of my brain that it just boosts my mood like instantly. It's like the easiest happy pill (laughs) that you can take is just to put some oils in your diffuser and smell them in. But then not only that, we can use that knowledge to purposely create what I like to call triggers for change that you want to make in your life. So whether that be a change to your diet, a change to your exercise routine or your lifestyle, or maybe a goal that you're trying to reach. I I once interviewed a book writer who said um, he used, I forget which oil it was, um, but he used one essential oil to, to like trigger him to write his book on time. He would smell that oil in every time he would think about, you know, writing this book in this end of his book deadline. And he would diffuse that while he was writing his book. And now every time he smells that oil, he wants to get on his computer and start writing. And so a lot of people can, can use essential oils as triggers for, starting a new health care, a health routine or self-care routine. Um, I like putting oils on my wrist, like my inner wrist area. There's a few blends that I use whenever I'm feeling a little sluggish or feeling like a little um, low on my self-care. I'll put some oils on that spot and it really triggers me to remind myself, oh, I'm important. (laughs) I'm worth it. And yes, I am going to go do that thing that I've been putting off that I know is really good for me right now. Yeah, actually, now you've now after this, I want to go make a roller bottle of something to put on my wrist that gets me up in the morning to go exercise. What should I put in it? Oh, that's a really good question. Okay, so you'd want to balance it out, I'd say, with something really uplifting. So things that are really uplifting to me are um, ylang-ylang, uh, rose oil or any citrus oils like grapefruit, I think is super energizing to me. So I'd probably kind of have that as my baseline. And then I would sort of mellow it out a little bit with something a little more grounding. I'd say my favorite grounding oil is blue spruce. I love blue spruce and black spruce. Like both of the spruces are just super great. They're very woodsy and very, um, very grounding in this very like humbling way where you're just, you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would probably top it off with something like peppermint that just gives you that kind of zing. And especially if we're talking about exercise, because peppermint has this also really added benefit of helping circulate more oxygen in the body. So a lot of, a lot of athletes like to either, um, ingest, like put it in their water or rub peppermint on their chest before exercising because it uh, stimulates that oxygen production. And so their, their performance actually gets enhanced with peppermint. So So that would be, that would be my just made up on the spot (laughs) exercise rollerball. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds so fun. Grapefruit and peppermint sound fantastic together. And then I guess I'll just play with the other one. Uh, that just makes great points. You kind of get, you're kind of getting me excited about, sometimes I'll just like forget I have a diffuser, right? Like, ugh, right. Yeah. I'll fill that darn thing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
<laughs> people that last you're not alone day. as someone who my entire you know I have an entire podcast where we talk about essential oils every single week and and I still there you know my oils are right there and it, it is easy to ignore them sometimes it, why is it so hard to take care of ourselves Krista <laughs> I don't know but you have me kind of thinking of like maybe putting a little shelf right in front of my desk right here so I can kind of enjoy it throughout the day in fact mm-hmm. um, I have a couple teenage girls I have an exchange student right now and my own teenage daughter and I took them shopping not long ago and unfortunately one of them brought home some sprays from a popular body shop store and like I would just want to gag when they come upstairs and smell like this I'm like you guys smell so like to me that does not smell good anymore it's just um it's a problem uh, a little bit for me and there's a lot of reasons for that but I feel like Christmas would be a great time to have a little bit of a make your own fragrance party or something, right? Like here, let's, uh, I mean, I'd love, I wish you live next, next, the next town over and I could just hire you to come and, and do fun little things because that's, I think when it can be really enjoyable and really fun. So it can be, it can be so much fun. And that's why I love, like I have my own sort of oily community online. Like we have a Facebook group and we all hang out. There's literally like 2000 of oily addicts hanging out online all the time. And we do those kind of online parties all the time where we're like making, doing perfume recipes and things like that. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can do like cookie essential oil parties and whatever you want to do. And it, it is so much fun Um, and that's what it's all about. It's like getting, getting together in your community and having fun with these oils because the possibilities are just endless. Absolutely. So we've covered some basics about um, essential oils and how to use them. We've talked about the physio, like some really cool pearls about detoxification and then cleaning and then use of um, essential oils for triggers, which I love the idea of that. So really thinking about habits that you want to change or improve and then associating a scent with that, right? So like my thing that I'm trying to do right now is you know, exercise three times a week in the morning. So that's going to be the first thing I do is develop a scent for that. I kind of want to have this guy's reading scent or I'm sorry, writing scent as well. Like really cool things, whatever you suck at doing, like think about some triggers. So those are really interesting triggers because I'm, I don't know this very well, but I know that, um, with creating a habit, you're supposed to have, like, it's part of creating a new habit is turning on triggers. Um, are you familiar with that kind of circle and cause and effect thing? A little bit. Yeah. And I wouldn't call myself an expert, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we've covered those things, but I know you want to talk a little bit more about essential oil blends for stress and whatnot, but first, why would you say that essential oils are such a powerful tool for emotional health? Well, kind of coming back to the way that we process smells and how that olfactory bulb is is it's like a direct link to that limbic system and the and the hippocampus, um, which is where our emotions uh, are really controlled. So the limbic system directly controls your stress response, which your your stress response it uh, the key functions are heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, memory, stress levels, hormone balance, and moods. That's all coming out of your limbic system. And so essential oils, they they pass directly through the blood-brain barrier. Like not a lot of things can go past the blood-brain barrier, but essential oils can. They go past that blood-brain barrier and they can really directly, I like to say, love on that area of our brain. Um, so essential oils that, especially ones that are really high in, there's a constituent called sesquiterpenes, which I just love saying that word. It's so fun. <laughs> So essential oils really high in sesquiterpenes can pass through that blood brain barrier, go through that olfactory system directly to the limbic system of the brain and love on those things that control your heart rate, your blood pressure, all those stress responses. Um, So like certain oils, I pulled out some recipes that um, I actually stole these from Jen O'Sullivan. So she's an amazing essential oil educator and she has an app called the EO bar that she's got all these essential oil recipes on. So I wanted to share a couple of her blends for stress in particular. So the first one, um, it's just called stress synergy and it's 50% lime oil, 20% cedar wood, which cedar wood is super high in sesquiterpenes and 20% lavender and 10% copaiba and copaiba. I could go on for a whole episode about, but I'll spare you. (laughs) Um, and then another, blend you can create for stress is uh, 30 drops spruce oil, 15 drops frankincense, five drops 
fir oil and a base of 15 drops grapeseed um, carrier oil. And then two other oils you can just use as singles if you want to really work on um, stress is frankincense. That's my go-to. Like, Krista, I, do you have any kids? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Right now. So you know that time after birth, that first couple of weeks where you just feel like you're not even in your own body? Mm, yeah. The first two years, you mean? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, like the, I remember after my, my daughter was born, I was just, I, I still remember just kind of pacing through my house a little bit and feeling like I was not even in my own body. I was just kind of floating up here and my whole energy was just so erratic and I didn't feel like myself and it just, it felt really off. And so I went to my oil shelf. I pulled out some frankincense. I rubbed that frankincense on my ears. I think the ears is a really good spot for emotional support. And immediately I could just like almost vis vis visibly see my body just coming back into itself and grounding back down. So frankincense is one of my, my absolute favorite single oils if I had to pick one for stress and like emotional grounding. Love it. So frankincense is a single. Was there a second single or no? Oh, yeah. Black spruce. Yeah. Black spruce really helps promote uh, stability, those feelings of stability and grounding. Maybe that's why. So I live close to the Black Hills of South Dakota, and I think there's probably a lot of spruces. But anyway, when I go there and I inhale, I feel so at peace and I feel so great and I feel grounded. I It makes my soul happy. And so as you talk about that, that's my immediate reaction that, oh, I need that in my life to make my myself feel that same grounding happiness just right here because um, where I am at right here is gorgeous and peaceful and country like as well but the smell isn't there I don't get that lovely smell I even have some cedar trees in the very 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 backyard and so sometimes if I'll walk through those I'll sometimes if it's the right season weather etc I'll get a lovely smell as well so that's that's immediately what I think of when you say that mm -hmm. Yeah. And that just sort of proves that if, if you don't think you're oily yet, you're wrong. Cause like we're surrounded by essential oils all the time, even if they're not in your home, which they probably already are. Like a lot of companies will use essential oils to, to flavor food or to put into products and stuff. So most people are already ingesting and using oils or, or smelling them every day and they don't even realize it. Mm, my favorite chocolate bark last year. I haven't been able to find it this season and it's actually a bit depressing pressing but it was a it was a lovely chocolate bark maybe I should just make my own and I know that it had peppermint oil in it as part of how they were doing the the canes in it the candy canes it was like a really clean labeled thing and anyway they maybe didn't bring it back this year it was legitimately the best stuff ever and I know it was so much better because of the use of essential it was very obvious and very clear right. it was just perfect so yeah okay I have like a stack of peppermint chocolate bars in my fridge I'm gonna mail you one after Ooh, this did you make them <laughs> No, no, I just got them from the company that I buy from for my essential oils. They also make, you know, they have a lot of other products too. And one of them they make, it's an annual thing. So that's why I bought like 50 bars. Oh, <laughs> that's so wonderful. I had no yeah. idea. I love, love, love it. Yeah. So I want to touch really quick on, you mentioned you were talking about the blend of lime, cedar wood. I'm so excited too, because I have a couple, you know, sometimes you do these auto ship things, then you accidentally get too much of an oil you don't know what to do with. And when right. cedar wood is one of mine, um, um, and so I'm excited <laughs> that you mentioned cedarwood. So lime, cedarwood, lavender, and copaiba, uh, which I was always calling this copaya. And I used to use it for my kids when they were teething, and it worked really beautifully. And so I know um, you're going to come back for Encore, and we'll talk about cop copaiba, copaya, copaiba um, versus CBD oil. So I'm really, I'm just priming us because I'm really excited um, for you to do that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fun topic for sure. Yeah. So Sam, you're a wealth of knowledge so much. Um, what is your gut reaction? You'd share with someone that's listening today, feels like you're speaking directly to them or just kind of interested, like you just got them excited and they just want to get started. Like, what's your advice to say, here's something you can start today or tomorrow? Sure, sure. Well, I always say no one should oil alone. So get yourself, you know, into a community. You probably know someone that does essential oil stuff. I'm available. I love helping people like get started and getting them, you know, plugged into all our communities. But if you're looking for just something you can do today to start to learn those sort of 
basic know-hows and safety guidelines. Um, I have a free oil course. It's just freeoilcourse.com and it's pretty short. It's just three videos that go to your inbox and that really sets you up with sort of the basic know-how to get you really comfortable. That's beautiful, really. And plus, not hard to remember if you're driving (laughs) freeoilcourse.com. It's like this girl knows what she's doing. And then of course, um, online, we can find you at the Essential Oil Revolution podcast. Is there any other website that you need to share as well? Yeah. So the podcast is called the Essential Oil Revolution. So thank you for allowing me to share that. The podcast website, though, is revolutionoilspodcast.com. So those can those get a little, a little tricky. Um, and then if you're just looking to connect with me in general, my website, samanthaleewright.com, is sort of the hub where all of my, all of my interests live under one umbrella. <laughs> Perfect. Love it so much. Well, you were a blast to interview. I really enjoyed it. And I look forward to our re- Really interesting next conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. One of the best gifts you could give us at The Less Stress Life is your feedback. We are paid in podcast reviews. If you enjoyed this or any other episode, please leave us a review. In the iTunes store or from your podcast app, just search for Less Stress Life as if you're not already subscribed. Click on the banana face image, scroll to the bottom where it shows the text of other reviews, and write a review. While you're there, hey, make sure you hit subscribe. For Android or Stitcher users, you gotta go to the desktop site and search for Less Stress Life and then scroll down to leave a review. Stitcher doesn't load Apple reviews on their site, so if you want, you can leave a review in both places. Your feedback means a lot to the success of the show. Thanks so much for taking the time to do that. You rock.